Hello, 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 and greetings, fellow adventurers of Vera. Welcome to Tavern Talk at the Golden Feather Tavern. We are Vertec and Chibi, keepers of this fine establishment. The Golden Feather Tavern is open to all travelers to come and share their thoughts on the inner workings of Vera over a nice tankard of ale, mead, hot chocolate, or other delicious beverage of choice. So, raise your glass or other container, uh, pull up a chair, and... Uh, join in tonight's discussions today is the 29th of may 2024 and we're on episode 019 that's right 19 episodes of tavern talk thus far and this one is called let's talk no wars chibi how are you doing today doing pretty good doing pretty good how about yourself fantastic fantastic i escaped yet another day of work and by escaped i mean by the skin of my teeth. It's always fun, though, mm -hmm. to be able to come onto a show afterwards, you know? Mm -hmm. But hey, now that we're at the uh, tavern, what do we have on tap today? Tonight, we're going to be talking about uh, some just various topics on Node Wars. Uh, just as a reminder for those of you watching on YouTube later, um, this is recorded before the dev discussion. So uh, the things that we are talking about live um you're always welcome to join us usually it is tuesdays at 7 p.m and not wednesdays but work was being a little bit of a meanie yesterday so uh we moved it back but um <laughs> yeah if you would like to join us live and join the conversation with all these lovely folks that are in our chat right now um it's one of those uh things where you just Click the notification bell see when we go live hop on over and uh if you've been around us before you're more than welcome to join us like these lovely folks have uh pockets and zillin uh mm -hmm. welcome to the tavern yeah thanks for having us of course thank you of um. course of course we like to have a a good old tavern talk with our patrons mm -hmm. It is a villain. Villain's back. Yes. Not the yeah. first and time you folks have heard their voices back. for sure. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Let's see here. Bear with but, me. Uh, I think what I might it, do, it might I might actually, actually get us a banner. It be the first photo. time that you guys have heard my voice, honestly. Ooh. Like, I'm just thinking about I don't think I've ever been on anything other than like my own streams that, that I people would hear my voice. So. Mm. Mm. Fair. Mm. I mean, we were playing. Uh, <laughs> we were yeah, we were playing, playing the other night, but like, there's not that many people that come watch. So, like, I, there, not a lot of people have heard my voice. True, true, mm. true. Mm. Hot Wait, pocket. you were there when we were doing Sea of Thieves, weren't you? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. One, one. I was there for a Sea of Thieves. I was, yes. What that one time? That one time. That one time. And see if thieves. Still can't believe we haven't had you on the show. Like the show. It's upcoming. upcoming. Yes, it is upcoming. Actually, <laughs> for those of you watching this, you could probably check out the community tab on our YouTube channel, and there will be a lovely little uh journal with all of the events coming up this month. Um, and I'm saying this month because by the time uh this gets posted, it shall be June. <laughs> And uh, it shall very excited be about June. It. Oh my god, <laughs> my sultry voice! You guys are funny. So, we just kind of wanted to talk about this, is not really all that structured. We kind of structure it when it's just the two of us just to keep conversation going. Um, but we just kind of wanted to talk about uh node wars, and we were talking, I was talking earlier this week with uh. Lloyd about the difference between node wars and sieges. We have um, both of those wikis pulled up. We also have the live stream Q and A wiki pulled up, um, in case any of those have any like um, inspiration for node war conversations. But all in all, I guess to get things kicked off and started here, how excited are you for Friday's live stream? Oh, this is the one, ain't it? The it's one. one of the ones for sure. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, I guess I guess it could be nodes three, but short mm. of that, 
uh, okay augments if they were going to show augments that'd be that would be absolutely a massive stream but node wars is going to tell us a lot isn't it isn't i mean to me this is it's the most important one of the year at least that we've had so far yeah, I, I mean, it is one of the, I think, monumental pillars, right, within inter-node conversations, just like Guild Wars, right? Node Wars, mm -hmm. Guild Wars. So we know that uh, from the wiki, it says that the Node Wars affect your uh, reputation between the nodes. So... Very interested to see how this changes things yeah that, I mean, that so, would even for me that would go on the list of things that i'm hoping they're going to talk about the reputation mm -hmm. and how that matters and what it's going to do for you if you have good reputation or bad reputation for a node like or with a node I'd like yeah this huge 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 live stream yeah because actually the node to node reputation section is actually very barren all it says and i will read it because it's very tiny <laughs> node to node reputation activities include trade agreements and wars between nodes Completing mayoral commissions will reward node to node reputation. The end. Wow. <laughs> That's all we know <laughs> about node reputation. <laughs> what about you, Pockets? How excited are you for Friday? So Zillan was much more excited than I was about the actual announcement. Now, yeah. the thing is, this is the one that they're going to give us the month announcement for. This is my hopium. This is what I'm excited about. I This is what I feel is coming, but... Uh, Maybe it's not, but I, I'm living on Hopium. Um, I'm not. I, I'm not too excited about Node Wars itself, um, unless they show us some stuff that that would really be what I was looking for um, mm -hmm. when when it comes to Node Wars. And so I, 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 I I'm not. I'm not too excited about it yet. I'll, I'll get there later. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, and I mean, it's one of those things where for some people it's going to be really. Like, this is their bread and butter. This is, like, a big thing, you know? And then for others, they're like, not really my my type of system. Uh, but, Vertex, how excited are you for, for Friday? I am very excited. So very excited. <laughs> um, get, this is one out. of those, get off those things. Right now. Yeah. Kick yeah, them yeah. off? Okay, I'll, I'll kick them out get of the now. Zoom right now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's... um. I mean, Node Wars is one of those things, right? It's one of those linchpins for a lot of a lot of the systems to kind of hinge on, really, because the the whole PvP is going to transform the world, mm -hmm. and Node Node Wars are going to be much more common, I feel, than full tilt sieges, right? There's going to be more yeah. of them, and that and is, I think, a big difference between a siege and a war, right? Because the wars they happen during prime time. Um, wait, anytime. Sorry, players can kill each other at any time during the war, not only during server prime time, where I think the sieges is during prime time, just to mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. myself. So, I don't know. I'm excited. But also, I thought this was interesting. Mm -hmm. Vassal nodes cannot declare a node war on their parent node or right. any of their vassals. Yeah, that's that's part of the system that they put in place to stop uh oh god i i did a video on this a long time ago and now my my brain's not remembering uh exactly how how it goes but um you definitely do not want to let the nodes in your area beat you to to rank four because that does, that's not the case until uh rank four that's when it locks out all the nodes below it from advancing past you and mm -hmm. they can't meet and they can't siege you or, or go to war with you so basically it's a forced vassal system so it creates a race to uh, to get there. And then it also creates people to do what they call vote with their feet, which will be instead of living in the in the GTFO. node that's a forced vassal, you leave, you go somewhere else that's not inside that zone of influence. You help them build up and then you go knock down the node that you want to knock down. And then hopefully you could move into the node you want to live in and build it up and beat that node to to, re to rank four so that you're not locked below them. So, yeah, that, that's part of the whole system that's that's creating uh, a strife between players. That is actually very complex now that you say it that way. <laughs> it's very complex. All right, and I apologize, by the way, there, guys. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but just so you know, I am currently building out a little banner on the screen because I did not get that done ahead of time just because 
the live stream is going to be in a couple days, so we're bound to have a whole lot of random stuff. So I want it to be in all the videos just yeah. in case. So someone's like, but they said. <laughs> well, luckily, I think this will be the only one before the live stream. So. Mm -hmm. but, but I just um, want to put it to pocket that uh, okay. Intrepid has become kind of like the kings of announcements about announcements. So yeah. it, I think there's a 0% chance that they're going to tell us the month because if they were going to tell us the month, we'd already know it. I mm. hate you for, for letting me, like, <laughs> I, I think I agree with you on this. Yeah. He did kind of spring the quarter on us kind of last minute, though. Didn't they do it mid-month, like, with its own little announcement? It yeah, was, I like, mean, one of those, like, they were streaming, and they're like, and we have an announcement for you. And I'm like, oh, boy. No, we knew we were going to get the quarter release date at least a few oh. days before. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't. Oh, OK. No, we knew. We definitely knew. Um, OK. So, yeah. And, they, and they've been doing this now for a while. I can't even remember the last time they told us something in a live stream that was a total surprise. Mm, fair. You know, as far as announcements like that. Now, don't get me wrong. They could. But I, you know, I would think that. You, you know, from a hype perspective, and especially if they're about getting ready to launch Alpha Alpha 2, then they're mm -hmm. going to want the hype to build. They'll have a lot more people there watching if they announce ahead of time that they're going to announce the month. So I, I honestly I, feel like my personal thoughts, because we were just talking about this before we went live. I think since June is the last day for quarter two, we'll probably hear about an announcement for June's development stream. Because otherwise, you're in quarter three. You're knocking on the door, basically. Right. No, I. That's what I think too. So I don't As... know if Chibi and Vertex, if you saw this, but Owensington mm. redeemed a question up there. Oh, I did not see that. He said, uh... "What would make the Node Wars update, and what would break the Node Wars update?" Ooh. Ooh. That's a good question. And I, this actually, this this is the part that I would actually want to talk about, like because I do have high hopes for the Node Wars, and so can I answer this? Absolutely. <laughs> Ready to say go. go. Okay. So uh, when I found out what you guys were talking about, I remembered that I had commented on one of the the dev discussions a long time ago. I, I, it's like seven hundred word uh, <laughs> post that I put in there, so I know most people didn't read it, but. <laughs> Um, one of the things I talked about in there was a system kind of like um, Fat Princess. I don't know if any of you guys ever played Fat Princess on the PS3. I've never heard of that. <laughs> I know what it is. I played it a couple of times, but not very much. It is a fantastic party game, uh -huh. um, but it doesn't have like like a local area that you could play it. And you have what it is, is you have a capture the flag scene and the princess is a flag. Um, you could feed her cake and make her more fat so she's harder to steal. Um, you have engineers that go out and they chop down wood and so they can build up the defenses. You have uh, like you have six different classes and then they have a secondary class that you can play. Um, but the thing that I like about this game is that the, the game is capture the flag. And so like I was thinking about like a node siege is that that is the game. The node siege is the game. Um, and I know that the PVPers are going to be all about the node siege. And so what I would like to see is something more along the lines of like Fat Princess, where it's not just about the overall game, but each individual person has their role to play within the game. Um, mm -hmm. You might be going out and gathering cake. You might be going out and chopping down trees that, to, to, you know, you might be doing something to help research and, and things like that. I, I want to see, a, a system that brings in not just the PVPers, but maybe somewhere where you actually have like a full PVPer, um, or sorry, PVEer that is out in their full gathering yeah. mode, uh, like because they can get like so many extra lumber per chop or whatever like that. And then you have like the PVPers actually running guard for them um, mm -hmm. because you know that this is so valuable that we have to get it during this this point that you actually have them going out and protecting and running like cover for the the gatherers and stuff like that. And like the PVE and PVPers all have a system and a role to play within the, the siege. I like that. Like, I think that's also very important um, because 
for people like me who prefer harder core PvE stuff, having a place in a more PvP centric system definitely helps to bring more of a PvX aspect to it. <laughs> um, but also, if I'm not the strongest PvP -er, I can still assist people. Not the strongest PvP or we saw you in that caravan video. We know you're leet. We know <laughs> you, you, know, you can't hide you anymore, Bree. I look, no comment. <laughs> Just saying, it's uh, as of that video, it's official that uh, cleric is the best tank. <laughs> yes, yes, or at least a chibi cleric is the best tank. There you go. Oh my gosh. Um, so she since you unstoppable. <laughs> Pocket, since you answered what would what would make it for you, I I'll take what would break it for me. Okay. Um, would be too much variation from the things that they've already told us about the node wars. Um, because I've spent a, a lot of time really thinking about and researching, and I've even made a few videos on um the node wars and the systems that they have going there and what it at least what it looked to me that they were trying to accomplish with those wars. Um so, for example, you know, I, I I kind of caused a big stir, speaking of the caravan video, um, with my reaction to the caravan video about there not being enough risk for risk for the attacker. And mm -hmm. it would be the same thing for me if there was little to no risk for the attacker in a node war, because then you would just your your node would be constantly being attacked all the time for, you know, with no uh, uh, no need for any any anything for you to risk. So, for example, one of the things that they've said or, or Stephen said at one point was that. Um, in order to to buy the the thing that you have to buy, I forget what he called it, like a writ of war or something like that. Um, in order to buy that, to declare war on another node, it's going to cost roughly as much resources and time as it took that node to build itself up. So it's not it's not free. You don't just attack. So if they were to go away from that, that would really hurt hurt it for me. So really, what what I want a reinforcement of the things that they've already told us how the node wars are going to work and that they're going to be meaningful and they're going to be impactful and they're not going to be happening all the time constantly where you're literally every day trying to organize um you know defenses for your uh for your your territory because that's not fun and it sucks a <laughs> new world <laughs> <laughs> oh actually that's funny that you name dropped that um i was going to tell you that uh i was informed when i did uh point this out in the forums um, Psycho uh, actually told me that New World had this system that I was talking about in Ooh. their Alpha 1. They had it so that when you like sieged a, a city or like we're doing like the, oh, like the the capture of the areas and stuff like that, that the people would have to go out and get materials in order to defend it. So I was going to say that, that that was actually something that was in New World and they took it out. So <laughs> of course I did. Interesting. Of course I did. All right, Bertrand, hmm. you want to take the make or the break? Man, you know, so I think what would really, man, see, this is this is tough because I really want to say that it needs to be something engaging and fun and something that everybody would want to kind of drop and, and run to to help. But that's kind of, I feel, a little bit of a default answer, right? Because it's kind of what everybody's hoping for. But as far as specific stuff... I would love if I saw something that engaged PvE type players. Like something that actually brought them into there. Cause because again, like so much of this game, so much of this game is centered around PvP. That when you when you when you think about a war or a siege or something, like get PvE players involved in something like that. Like they're gonna run for the hills and avoid that. They're gonna try to fight and they're gonna have a miserable time. You're you're literally saying, um, you know, go and go and you must take part in the activity that you don't really like to do. It's not like you can choose to go and elect to jump into an arena, but you have to go defend your node. You have to. You must. Absolutely, you have to. And it's kind of like, no matter how much you may like a certain dish, but if it gets thrown in your face 700 times and you can't choose another one every once in a while or another way of enjoying that same dish, like... All you get is fried chicken all the time. I, and we know, a t we know a person or two who would love that, but if all you could have is fried <laughs> chicken every once in a while, you just want like a grilled chicken cutlet. It's still chicken, right? But you want it grilled with some salsa or something. So, you know, let the PvE players have something, something to do with node wars and, and sieges. Like, give them a choice so they're not forced into yeah. PvP if they don't like it. Yeah. And... 
I mean, I know that with the node sieges, um, death penalties will not apply to objective-based events. Um, and I believe node wars are also an objective-based event. So at least there's that in terms of like, hey, there's there's not going to be any death penalties for this, which is nice. Um, but for me, the thing that will break it is that if, because um, I say node wars can be declared at any time, but the objectives will only spawn during server prime time, not objective singular, but objectives plural. And I was talking to Lloyd and I was saying it would be kind of cool if it was like uh, World of Warcraft's like various PvP grounds, the battlegrounds that they have, like Warsun Gulch. Like maybe there's a capture the flag thing or maybe there is a resource control thing um, and a, a variety of different fun and unique objectives. Maybe if they can find a way to make it different, because I know for some people they're like, oh, it's just another capture the flag again. But I honestly have a lot of fun with those types of gameplay mechanics. Um, I found myself doing more of Warsong Gulch type stuff rather than open world PvP. <laughs> um, and I think it's, it comes down to objective based PvP is more interesting to me than just running past Zillin and deciding to attack yeah, him for no reason. Which everybody <laughs> should do anyway, but besides that. <laughs> hey, anybody can get it. Come on. <laughs> but. but yeah, I think if, if it's just uh, if it's just one type of thing or if it's not nearly as complex as I was I'm hoping for it to be, like with lots of different options to choose from, I think that'd be really fun. Um, yeah, I think I I'll think see. the only thing just to drop in my what would break it thing. I think the only thing that for me would break it, keeping these things in mind, like they're still like not even in alpha two yet. It's still mm -hmm. everything's subject to change. It's open development, yada, 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 yada. The only thing that would break it for me is if it just flat out got delayed again. If they said, hey, so we couldn't make it work for, for this month, let's put it off again. Like, show us the warts. Show us the warts. Bring the warts I out. Feel, I feel like a lot of the community is with you, actually, on that. Um, I don't know about I, you guys I, with your communities. Huh? I, I like, as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, yeah, that would definitely break it. Like, that, that the delay would be, ugh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like that your, your guys' idea seems like all of you kind of are in, in lockstep on the idea of PvE being a way that you could assist your 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 node war without actually having to participate in PvP exactly. Yeah. Um I really I really like that. And I was immediately my brain started going off to like how could you do that? And my the 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 first thing that came to my mind was like if you had two raid teams whatever your 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 node has a raid team and the other the, the attacking node has a raid team and you enter a you know two versions of the same dungeon at the same time and it's a race and the team that win gets some big bonus to their side that's fighting the node war or something like mm. that like you could yeah, do yeah, things yeah. to have people be doing pve and see because what, what i what immediately stuck out to me was when you guys mentioned hey you know i want to be able to do pvp pve to help was people started talking about like resources to going lumber who can chop the most lumber and stuff and i'm like that's barely pve <laughs> i guess it yeah, kind of yeah. is but like i want to actually be fighting uh you know npc controlled monsters ai controlled monsters um in some type of a way that's competitive with other people who are also fighting those same monsters without actually actually having to fight uh, against other players so that's a great exactly. idea i would like to see them uh, expand on that yeah, yeah. Just for chopping trees but i would like to see crafting like, like you yeah. have your crafters there reinforcing the walls, have your, you know, alchemists that are up on the wall, like making concoctions, they're pouring down on the, you know, like you could do other things like that. Like had the, the people that are the master crafters find a way to include them as well. Um, and I think that the, the PVE aspects should be just as powerful as the PVP aspects within a, a siege and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the that's the thing. We had a long conversation about that before on what would you define as PVE versus PVP versus Oh yeah. Like somewhere in the middle. And then okay, well I think a lot of us came to the conclusion that no, you know what? Gathering and crafting, that's not even PVE. Like you <laughs> you can do PVE stuff to obtain some some starter materials for that, like on the way there, but no, that's all economy based. Yeah. Like you're you're collecting economy ingredients is what you're doing. Oh my but, uh, gosh. But yeah. I'm sorry. 
Lloyd is laughing at our disclaimer, and I was explaining yeah. that on one of our videos, I got a comment saying, hey, we already know that Rogue got pushed back. And I was like, yeah, well, we do now. But like at the time of recording this, we were just talking about like different archetypes and stuff. Um, yeah. It, so we wanted to put this up because, you know, it's a couple of days. We're, we're shooting the breeze a couple of days before their their monthly live stream. So yeah. we're going to uh, have so some inaccurate and out of date stuff. Absolutely. Um, you were going to say something. You could also have offensive PvE in that aspect as well, like going and chopping down their trees and then using it for like ballistas, um, like mm -hmm. going and like crafting and building like siege siege materials that are outside of the thing. Like, there's ways that you could incorporate it with like the crafting aspect of it. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, with with the with the uh, uh, survey system, it sounds like like surveying is actually going to be somewhat of a real life talent. Like you're, you're going to actually have mm. to have some skill in doing that. Yeah. And what if, what if there was a small forest that's between the two nodes and that's where all of the wood that is going to be used in the node has to come from. So the two sides are competing over all the wood that's in just a small forest. And so the best surveyors would end up getting the best stuff and maybe they, you know, make increased like ballistas that are better or whatever, as the example mm. you just gave. Yeah. I, I'm, see, I really like a lot of this stuff. You guys are getting the brain. Now, you that. know what else? So check this out. So here's, here's the thought that I, that I realized the other day and it made me really sad. So in playing so many games that have PVP sets of gear and PVE sets of gear, and it always felt so cheap, like, why do I need two different sets of gear? And finally, they, Steven said, no, you'll have one set of gear. It's going to be PvP and PvE. And I celebrated that until I realized that the thing that I've been rallying for this whole time to get more PvE involvement in the game could absolutely be obtained by having two different sets of gear. Because then PvE players in a, in a raid would not, sit, would not be beat down quite as bad by people running in in um other pve gear to fight the boss but somebody who's trying to roll around the map take out pvp players i mean they're gonna they're gonna get beat down but they're gonna have a lot of hard to, harder time fighting that boss so they might actually get beat by that boss because they don't have the stats needed to take it on so the mm -hmm. pve players will withstand you know boss fights and be able to take down a boss fight better and have a have a better chance of killing those than pvp players running around in pvp gear and it made me really sad that I came to the realization and came full circle of maybe we do need two sets of gear. Maybe it would be great. I think people will still carry two sets of gear. Um, like, like, okay. like, I know that I carried like four on my Druid for World of Warcraft and like oh. had two bags that were just full of different sets of gear because of everything that I would have. Um, oh. Yeah, I, I, I did it for that, but I also did it for cosmetics before Transmog was the thing. <laughs> I couldn't afford to. I had too many. Um, Bazillion mentioning the the surveying makes me think. Uh, the other day I was watching uh, Age of Empires like uh, uh, tournament style thing, and the way that they looked at like where the resources were on the map and what was the objectives and stuff like that. I really like the idea of like surveying and looking at knowing where to like think about all the battle planning that would go into it. Um, also, I don't remember who all I was talking to about this, but we were talking about. Uh, the flying mounts, um, the, the, you know, there's only going to be a few of them and uh, how that's going to like allow for commanders to like survey and be above everybody else on the battlefield and be able to look. And then like, imagine if they were to get dismounted by like the other flying mounts, they would have to go back to their node to be able to get to the area and then go back. Um, it'd be really in like, cause they have to, they have to mount up in the stables or the Royal stables. And so, It'd be really interesting the amount of power that you gain from being able to see the overall uh, layout of a battle. Yeah, I agree. And um, I think surveying would be also really cool for like maybe if. Um, well, I guess kind of like what Sir Onzington was talking about, like can resources become so scarce in a node that it can effectively be starved out? Um, like what if you can survey like offensively to figure out where the other nodes uh resources are and then mm. take them out um or like mm. you know do that a couple of days in advance to start affecting their resources a little bit um i'm not entirely sure if it's going to be like um object objectively spawned or like naturally thing 
Um, you know, like how in, in certain games, there's like certain items that are only there as the objective while the objective is live and otherwise it's not. Um, oh, man. Right. So just and to then, feed off of your comment there, like what if the surveying, so you could, let's say uh, a node, a single uh, like uh, mining node could have mm -hmm. say 100 resources would spawn there. But uh, if you survey, it could it could end up critting to like 110. But because you went down below the one the 100 percent mark, it actually took it longer to start regenerating in that area. Like whenever there was a new timer that mm. kicked off for more. So surveying could be used offensively in that case. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, and then a couple of things. John Prescott says, I wonder if any of the world events will have happened during a node war, like mm. goblins attacking the node while a war is going on. Can you imagine that? That'd like be wild. You you've declared war against the next door neighbor, and um, while you're in the middle of a fight, you're suddenly getting reports that oh, by the way, your node's getting attacked <laughs> by an NPC camp. What well, if that's you kind figure of, that... out? What if you figure out the triggers that make things like goblins invading a node happen, and then do the trigger and the node at the same time, or like you know, basically time them up so that they're dealing with it at the same time? That yeah, is yeah. diabolical. I was actually, I that's kind of where I was going. That's going to be the meta. 100%. See, that's kind of where I was going with the, the two different sets of gear, too. Um, mm -hmm. Was if uh, you could, if a node could specialize into beasts of war and siege beasts, so that during a node war, they could have like, I don't know, battle cats or something run in, like tigers could run in with them. And yeah. everyone could have like a temporary battle pet that comes from the node itself if they check it out during a, a declared node war. Interesting. And then the PvE players would have an easier time taking those out with their PvE gear versus PvP geared people would be taking on the players. Hmm. Um, going back to the node of PvE, Hellstalker or Stoker said maybe it could be a king boss on a throne that mm. pve players can fight to help make the siege easier or something like i could imagine um uh there was the dragon that they had back at, like what alpha one i think pre-alpha one there was like um the video of fighting the dragon and can you imagine taking down the dragon would provide a buff to the area on your side if you guys took down the dragon first <gasps> hidden dagger it's raiding us Party of my 10 goodness. people. Oh my gosh. I just heard a bunch of noise, but I took my glasses off. So all I see is shapes on the screen. I know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you for reading in Hidden Dagger. It. Way to be. And welcome <laughs> in, everybody. Also, Chibi, I don't know if you noticed, but he actually changed his name. So it's just now Peon. And this, I think, is for you. Yeah. Yeah, I Aww. noticed that. I appreciate it. We we had a conversation about it the other day. It was like funny. I, I was having a hard time saying his name initially. Yes, <laughs> Without yes, getting you did. All red. You had many you had many difficulties saying his name. It was adorable <laughs> and I I treasured those moments. Thank you, Hidden Dagger Ann. Thank you for those. <laughs> All right, getting getting back to what you guys were talking about a second ago with the the dragons in in the siege the castle sieges, yeah, you, it would be interesting. It's an, it's another idea of bringing PVE into the the node wars themselves, and then piggybacking off of uh, I forget who was to put that in there. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to take his idea without giving him credit. Hell, it was a Hellstalker, yes, Hellstalker, um, yeah. with the with the king. You could do. Um, like the dragon where where both sides are racing to kill the king and and you know you have a you have a limited number of players slot so what if it's 20 or 40 or 100 whatever it is mm -hmm. um and what you would want to do is you would want to kind of gamble with the fewest number of people that you could possibly use to kill the king. That way, the rest of your guys could be fighting off their guys. Yeah. So you still have PVE guys, and then it incorporates PVP in it. And it's it's taking a, that that system away from the castle sieges or, or borrowing from it. But it's in a much more controlled environment because obviously in the castle sieges, it's just chaos everywhere where this would be a lot more controlled. And that's another way you could, like I said, just incorporate that PVE. So I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I just had what could be an amazing or a terrible idea. Oh, no. 
<laughs> and I, <did> too. <laughs> I think it could be amazingly easy or incredibly difficult to implement. I don't know any of the above, so I'm just throwing it out there. So what if uh, one of the unannounced uh, deities was a god or goddess of balance? And let's say if you uh, partook of certain quest lines, you could end up uh, unlocking a literal balance scale in your stats that had like three points to it. There was PvE, PvP, and economy. Mm -hmm. And the one you practiced with more, you got more of a tilt in... Uh, say luck percentage in that area like you had a certain percent extra crit chance in pvp or crit chance in pv you know pvp pve or uh, a chance to get extra gold when you're bargaining and whatnot and selling goods to merchants or buying things from npcs yeah and it could you know it could tilt in any of the three ways or balance right in the middle if you're if you're PvPing a lot and PvEing a lot and partaking in the economy, you'll just stay right there in the balance. You'll be you'll be perfect in the middle. But I wonder if you that start could to do be, more of one. I wonder if that could also be tied to like the god of war. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a god of war. Um, yeah, not think, the video game. <laughs> yeah, right. But I think that'd be a fun way to, you know, if someone went and they just spent all their time PvPing at all times. They're going to personally get some more skill, but then their character that they're playing all that PvP, pouring all that PvP time into is getting legitimately better at PvP. But they're yeah. going to be terrible to take to a raid as compared to a full <laughs> kit of PvE people. Maybe maybe not terrible. Going to be not quite as efficient to bring along. Oh, terrible. Yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh. We're terrible. Yeah. Welcome in there. Welcome in. If we're speaking in meta terms. Oh, let's hear it. So you guys were talking about the PvE killing the dragon, right? Yeah. I was thinking about the bards or the animal husbandry people um, trying to seduce the dragon to fight for you instead. Love it. And then you could utilize the dragon. Oh my gosh. All right. In the battle. Intrepid Super mega bard power. To seduce. <laughs> Super mega bard power. I love it. Bard. We're gonna... yeah. That's the love bard it. node you could be type. Escorting... Um, node superpower you could be escorting the king or the dragon or something somewhere both teams are trying to escort the guy so you're actually healing the boss instead of trying to kill it Ooh, i love that actually mm. because that's mm. like There's that so was many my ways favorite you do this yeah that was my yeah. favorite way to do um the uh mm, it's from lich king uh yeah, wrath of the lich king yeah was it cinder uh, the, the green dragon that's all i know yeah yeah, yeah i think it was so, the, the healers so. actually had something to do I, other than heal the main tank they actually yeah. they, i like the way that they flipped that one they had yeah, a lot I to do that like if you weren't expecting it and practiced in it that little alternate world was crazy wait how do you do it i, I did that so much and i Is don't this? even know the fight <laughs> yeah, <16. laughs> um <laughs> rolls a d20 and gets a 16. I don't think I seduced the dragon, but no, I tried. Um, no. Dragon <laughs> was Valentin unimpressed. Says, right. He's like, eh, you're a cleric. I don't care. <laughs> uh, you think blueprints or for defenses will pop up for a node siege so you can build blockades, trenches and stuff. I took I could totally see that for a node siege, but I wonder about like node war. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I think it'd be neat to be able to do something like that if there were if there were different tiers of defenses. Hi, Peon. You have yourself a fantastic evening. Drive safe, like. Doubles. And thank you again for stopping by. Um, it's very much appreciated. Yes. Thank you for bringing all of your friends over to our house. Oh, excuse Tavern. Me. Tavern house. We live here. Either way. Oh, no. Baby, can you ask that question again? I don't think I followed it. So, um, this came from Mr. Valentine. And... He was asking, do you think blueprints for defenses will pop up for a node siege so you can build blockades, trenches, etc.? So you said that for a node siege, yes. For node war, no. What no, about like, for, the, or, for, what'd you say? For node wars, I'm not sure, but I think it would be cool. Okay, so imagine going to somebody else's node and putting like these 
annoying ass traps in it it's like you know like pits that that you, you fall and you get stuck or something you know like <laughs> could, could you imagine like being able to get blueprints to go sabotage somebody else's no, uh node with that sounds so like people a rogue don't want to be there mm. rogue ranger for sure yeah <laughs> Okay, okay, or uh, even... And then uh, the rogues can disarm the traps. Let's see. Hmm. Or can it see the traps. Using those utility school skills. Sapper's right, 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 right. job during sie right. sieges. Uh, undermining should be a thing. I mean, yeah, how somebody is sapping people. Be seeing them. It, it, he means blowing things up, doesn't he? Yeah, oh. exploding. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Breaking under, I breaking. Shoom, right over my head. Didn't even notice. <laughs> Summoner can summon termites. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I wonder <laughs> how neat it would be if uh, you could you could turn your crafting professions into some form of combat mm. art when it comes to some of them, like I don't know, arcane engineering and. Armor Smith carpentry metalworking. If you were to just visit somebody else's node while they're preparing their node with all these random defenses uh, outside of wartime, or even even when they're even when they have like a siege declared and they're putting up defenses, but you're an ally with the node that that's coming to siege them. If you could go through and um, legitimately sabotage some of their defenses mm -hmm. because you're reverse engineering their their defense. Thing. Well, you know, with that's this wild. and that and that's the other. Complicated. What's that? So that's what I was just trying to wrap my head around that. That would be really wild and really complicated. Well, hey, you just got to be up to a certain skill level to be ordered yeah. in order to kind of like, uh, kind of like getting a, a a pattern. You have to be a certain skill right. to be able to do that. But once you have that skill, then you can train more skill with it. But now mm. you can do it. When I just gotta get a pattern for. You know, sabotage, sabotagery, yeah. which you can get in oh, PvP. But, oh, that's definitely a word. Counters, sabotagery, <laughs> absolutely. Created it so myself. What I, what I was thinking about when you were talking about the blueprints, I started thinking about how they have throughout, uh, you know, this entire game, not just in, in this particular aspect of the game, they've made it where nobody can have everything. And that includes nodes. So, you know, there's limited slots on a node, even a, even a, a metropolis level node can't have every single building of, of all the you know, maximized uh, ma or max level, you know, the biggest type or whatever. Um, and so you, I could see where there was there would be high level defensive things, maybe like uh, moats and, and fences and spikes and stuff like that. But even trebuchets and ballistas and stuff like that, that one node would have access to and be able to put up but other nodes wouldn't because they didn't spend their their slots on the, the particular crafting stations that you would need to make that so mm -hmm. i'd be fine with seeing that but i just don't want to see that be be what every single node is defended by come to think yeah. of it they did say at one point that you cannot alter the terrain so there wouldn't be trenches and there wouldn't be moats i i, I remember this now i i mm -hmm. uh like it was asked and steven answered it. it was within the last year um it was like a glancing kind of question or something like that but uh mm -hmm. but he did say something about like not being able to alter alter the terrain interesting okay, okay. yeah i don't know i also like um uh, you know, Paranaut said, I was talking about, I said this on another dagger stream, 10 rogues can destroy or break into gates. And I feel like that would align well with the um, 10 summoners coming together to summon a really large thing that uh, Steven mentioned previously. And then uh, Serenzi yeah. just says, give us some spy stuff for Node Wars Plock, Steven. And I, I jokingly said, rogues can turn surveying into spying. <laughs> uh thinking about what Paranaut said, uh mm -hmm. I know which class is gonna be the uh sapper that he was talking about. Oh yeah? It, it's the juggernaut, the one that the more it hits, the more momentum he gains. They're mm. gonna be the sapper. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be carrying the bomb into the wall. That's what's gonna be. Yeah, you're just smacking people as he runs by. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh. I just imagine somebody holding a bomb football style going like running slow-mo into a crowd. 
<laughs> you think of Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, I was when, literally about to say that. Yep. <laughs> Taking arrow shots and everything. He just runs it straight in. Yeah. Yeah. That's what a sapper does. They break the walls. I yep. kind of think, thinking a little bit more about what I was just saying about the, 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 uh, the no types and what, what you buildings you would have on them. Mm -hmm. Um, you, if a if a node chose to spend a lot more of their their building slots on like let's say apartments or on node housing or whatever and therefore mm -hmm. they had a higher citizenship that maybe their defense wouldn't be uh you know siege defense type weaponry and stuff like that it might just be we have more numbers than you we you know you you have a, a cap of 100 people in this node but our cap's 170 because we spent all of our building node uh, slots on increasing the citizenship of the of the node so like i would like to see them have different ways of defending other you know i just i just don't want every node war to be the same yeah yeah that would make mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. hmm i actually like that take yeah i think now here's a question: If they if they did have a pile of different uh, ways of interacting with like a, a a war, like do you think it should vary just based like on random choice or something like maybe uh, uh, terrain around them should should play a big part in it, or should it be like an equal balance on on something or? Say that uh, again. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm following. So if there were if there were multiple ways to, to wage war, like uh do you think do you think it'd be neat to have uh like the the surrounding environment play a big part? Like let's say they were out in the desert, I don't know. And so um no, you know, I can't even think of a, a good example right now. I, I, because I had one in like, mind, uh, like just the Princess Bride came into mind, like never starting a land war in Asia. Uh, <laughs> like like that, that's like the, in the desert. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, need yeah, to yeah. have you have to plan to have water to to make a siege on a, a desert uh, biome. Right. Yeah, like I was trying to I was trying to think of a good way to explain what's in my mind, and it just wasn't coming out quite in in the words I wanted to to spit. So hey, I I, I kind of picked up like a pax day kind of thing with what you were saying there because like when when you go pick up where you're gonna put down your stuff you you think about what is the terrain around you what mm -hmm. is accessible um and so like i would say that if the terrain and the the area of the node does not impact a siege on that node um i'd be really sad to see that um yeah. I, I would I definitely want like it might be harder for you to actually build up a node in that area like let's say you have it on a mountaintop you, it'll be harder to build up that node to a uh, level six because there's not as much resources within that area. But the flip side of that, the, the reward of that would be that it's much easier to defend because it's on the side of a mountain, you know? And so, like, mm. I, I would like to see that the terrain plays a part in where you select your node and how much effort it goes into building that up. Yeah, and, and what, see, that's kind of what I was thinking make? of would be yeah. almost... Like uh, one like one objective of a node war of like you were saying a, a node that's built into or on the side of a mountain, there could be you know a way to to stack logs up above and like roll them all down in a giant a giant avalanche basically into a node, take out some people or what have you. Roll some roll some boulders down the hill. Z. Yeah, kind of just use your environment to assist yeah. you. Yeah, I get you. Hey, As someone who played Life is Feudal, I've had enough of super duper realism. Mm. <laughs> mm. A shit ton of gliding mounts start pouring over your water, your, your walls from the mountain. <laughs> that would actually be an awesome thing to have. Like if you did get a node, then you're defending on a mountainside and then just seeing all the gliding come over the top to your back yeah. line. Like yeah. that, that would be cool. Oh man, yeah. could you imagine? sitting there in a node hanging out and then you find out that you've had you know a war declared upon you and you just see the sky darken with gliding mounts coming down the mountain <laughs> it'd be epic to uh rewrite for role plays for sure <laughs> look to the east at dawn but instead of gandalf and all the cavalry it's it's gliding mounts <laughs> gliding mounts 
Yeah, speaking of mounts, like last week we were talking about uh, the mayoral mounts and how you needed to, uh, if you lost a, uh, if your if your mount died, what was it? Uh, you had to go back to the stables on your in your own node to respawn it. It was you guys. I was talking to them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like, how much of a how much of a a superpower do you think that those mounts are actually going to be in, say, a node war situation or a node siege situation? Like, do you think they're going to be tide turning or they're going to be just an edge? Um, I know it's going to be a pain in the neck if edge. you're raiding somebody else's node and your your <laughs> mount dies. I'm sorry. Dylan just told Wizzy, hi, me and you got married in, in a video game yesterday. Don't ask. Don't ask. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and now you know. Uh, yeah, and, and now I, you know. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't actually know. Uh, I have an opinion on what the gliding mounts are going to do as far as combat abilities. Well, the uh, the and, mayoral, and how easy you, like the royal mounts, you, the ones that fly yeah, or those. How easy are you going to be able to be knocked off of them? I think is determines a lot of that. Yeah, that's well, fair. I mean, I know that. Um, where is it? Hold on, let me look it up. You have a time frame that you're able to to ride for them, right? I, Right. I know. Well, I think as a mayor, a mayor or a royal, um, you're able to write it like that's your that's your perk is your royalty. Um, but I know that I was talking to somebody about them dying, and um, yeah, because this is something. That... Yeah, I was just looking it up last week. If I recall correctly, it's something like twenty or thirty minutes worth of riding time on them, but then you gotta go back to your node to get another one or something like that. I don't know. It From was... the wiki, some crowd control abilities can dismount a mounted player. In that case the mount would persist with its own health pool and other stats. And then Steven says there is danger to traversing areas with enemies nearby. And there are specific abilities that knock a rider off of their mount should they venture too close to enemies. So I mean, I was I was remembering that because I was talking, I think, to um, I don't remember exactly who, but it was talking in our discord about it. And I was talking about how, like, if I spent a lot of money on a, a mount and it was able to die, I'd be annoyed, like mm. die forever. Um, but like being able to revive it makes sense. I just wonder how that's going to work. I know that's a whole other topic, but uh, in terms of, you know, mayor having uh, or royals having their special types of things or even um somebody on a gliding mount coming over i imagine you can knock them off of that gliding mount and then it, that their sol at that point <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah falling through the sky <laughs> well, i mean that's kind of like any other game though right like every other game like when you're on a mount you can get knocked off by getting hit once or twice yeah oh. okay here we go yeah, yeah yeah so under the royal mounts article and in, in wiki it says the maximum flight time on a royal mount is probably limited between 20 and 30 minutes this will limit oh, the range okay. of effectiveness for these mounts so you'll have to go back to your home node go to the stables the royal stables to to mount your royal mount and then you have 20 or 30 minutes to fly it out and do your thing and uh the, the royal mount huge, so you can't reach the entire map with your, with your, mount, yeah. With your mount yeah yeah oh, and also, just uh, for those that are maybe new, royal mounts are available to mayors and kings and queens of guild castles. And the occasional world boss drop as an egg. Yeah, but that one's more of a timed thing that's going to yeah. go away. But uh, specifically, uh, mayors uh, are uh, uh, active on a, no, on a server at any given time. Is that yeah. the, the number? They yeah, I just read that. It was between 10 and 20. Yeah. Anywhere from exciting. 10 to maybe a max, uh, say, around 20 is what Steven said. It's pretty interesting. I have no uh, illusions that I'm ever going to have a mount, a flying mount ever. I, but yeah, I would love the idea of of like really exclusive mounts where when you see somebody, you know that person worked their ass off. They're an important yeah. person on your server. Oh, I love that stuff, even though I'll yeah. never get to be that guy. I yeah, love same. the idea of it as well, and I don't ever expect to be that guy. I do expect to get a free hold, but like I don't expect to do the work that it takes to, in order to get the mount. Yeah. Yeah. Sir Huntington says easiest way to trigger an Ashes player, knock them off the mount and kill it before they can stop it. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's <laughs> sort of like the the bug mounts from WoW. Like the black uh 
black scarab oh the scarab yeah yeah. scarab Mm -hmm. lord yeah yeah yeah. like that like that that was a a feat and we we had two of them in our classic guild but like it's crazy the amount of work and i I was like no i never want to do that it's not that's not for me yeah that's fair people killing people's mountain ewa was spot on oh man was a sport sorry not spot on it was a sport i was i was glancing i was not reading (laughs) Killing anything you can get your hands on was a sport in Ultima Online. That was just a game of slay everything and everybody and everything in your way. If you didn't, you were not surviving very long. Pretty much. Mm. I I wish I had played Ultima Online, but I never played those. You would have possibly not liked it. I probably may not like it now with how how uh out of honestly kind of random i need to find something mmo-esque that i'm absolutely not annoyed at to try until we get into ashes so i can get back into the habit of like doing mmo stuff. no lifing no lifing. <laughs> I have to plan for the no lifing that's coming eventually. I was actually talking about this today as well. Like I've been playing League of Legends. Like it's it's every every game resets. There's nothing to really build. Like my character, I, I want to spend more time like on what I like. I want what I'm doing on a day to day basis. You want that persistence to build and to, to matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I I just need ash. This is what there's I need. There's a yeah. There's a flaw in y'all's plan though. We're all waiting for ashes. What's up? They all suck. All of them. Every <laughs> single mm. one of them. Fair. That's fair. That's why we're not playing them. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're sitting here talking about a game that doesn't exist. That's exactly right. Like, I like aspects of different of these different types of MMOs. I like aspects of them, but they're like together. I'm just like, but Ashes is going to kind of be like that. Me, I want a divorce by wife. What? Me, just kidding. But seriously, Ashes is coming out soon. <laughs> <laughs> wow, rude. <laughs> Your poor wife. That's why I'm playing low It's free and scratches the crafting itch. Yeah, it does. You know, I've never, I've never played Lotro. I don't think. See, here's the thing. I played Lotro for like, I, I, I had to have only been like two and a half months. And I don't remember why it was that I quit playing. And this was like when it was fresh out, new. It was amazing. Like the water compared to like World of Warcraft. Uh, and I I don't know why I quit playing. And the, the reason why I quit, I, I'm scared to go back and find out. Like, I don't remember. But mm. like I just feel it's like the same disappointment I'm going to have with everything else. But maybe, huh. maybe not, fair not. I, I, if, okay, I'll say this. If... You have an old account where you've already bought all the DLCs that they made you purchase and, you know, all of those things. If, you, if you've done all that, it's something fun to log into and it's all it always has a certain amount of fun. to it. But if you try to log in now and go play that game and you realize that it's going to be six dollars for you to buy the, the quest set that for when you leave the Shire and then it's another twelve dollars, you know, and it's just like I, I, I would start adding up. Well, like five hundred dollars worth of content for you to go buy uh, oh. makes it makes it hard to. I mean, I think you can be a subscriber and get away get away with a lot of it, but even then, yeah. not all of it. There's a lot of like pay to win or pay to, you know, for convenience that goes on there. So it's a good game, but I feel like you have to have an old account for it. Yeah, mm, I mm, can see mm. that definitely. Oh, okay, fair enough. Saying it's all free now. Oh, okay. I all free. Yeah, been, been like a year and a half since I played it, so maybe they made that change. Maybe. Heck, I still play Rift just for something to do. Fair. I've never played Rift either. Honestly, okay, I feel... Wait, what probably... have you played? I know, I was going to say that. I feel like I am maybe like the least capable person to talk about Ashes because I've only played World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy fourteen, and some game called um, uh, Fiesta Online. And then <laughs> I dabbled a very little bit for a moment in... Guild Wars 2, a moment in <laughs> Wildstar before it died. <laughs> and then I think I played Ragnarok online for like a moment. I think literally I like a couple hours in Wildstar and Guild Wars 2. I I tried playing Star Wars The Old Republic, but my computer told me no. 
<laughs> I think I've played less than you, Chibi. So that's like, if that puts it in, like, I've that played a lot. That feel better. <laughs> I've played a lot of Ragnarok and a lot of WoW, but I've played barely anything else as far as MMORPGs. WoW is what got me into uh, Ashes. Like, WoW is what got me into Ashes in a way, but D and D is what got me into WoW. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, that's all right though. You got some decent references on on at least what you like and don't like. Yeah, proportions of some games at least. Yeah. Um, but, uh, also, I just realized it's really weird because you're streaming, but you don't have the purple streaming color. What? Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, random ADHD mm. thought. Ignore me. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, th this has been really fun, and uh, this is kind of what I wanted Tavern Talk to be like. So if you guys have joined us for previous Tavern Talks, and then you're joining us for this one, let us know if you liked this format better. I'll do my best to uh, let people know what we're talking about ahead of time. Um, in general, I like just the idea of just chatting about like Ashes and some other MMORPG stuff, and really just wanted to kind of get a, a pulse check a little bit before this dev stream. I know it's a big one. It seems like there's a lot of hype behind this and equally, but in a different direction, a lot of hype for potentially Bard next month. <laughs> so. I'm actually hyped for Bard. I, I want to see more of the class releases, not so much of the systems. Yeah. But like I, I'm definitely excited for Bard. I, I I don't think I'll play one, but I am excited to see what they have as a I might test one out during Alpha 2. Like just to see what it's like for a primary. Start hitting his drum. I just don't like the Bard names. Like that's that's my problem. I don't, you don't like, like the Bard uh, names. Oh yeah. no. And I and I love like Bard is one of my favorite characters in League of Legends, and I love playing just Bard. But <laughs> Like, I looked at the names on there, and I'm like, I don't like any of them, so I don't know. It makes it feel any better. I don't like the tank archetype name. That's Lots fair. of people don't. Why? It's kind Why? of the same we, thing, right? We could have had, we had the whole stream tonight. It was fine. I didn't get triggered or mad the whole time. <laughs> you got to bring out the damn tank name. This is why we can't have nice things. For and sure. on this note, it's about time we start wrapping up. It's been about an hour. <laughs> It has been about an hour. Uh, on, on next week on triggering Zillin. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Gonna get them all riled Not up hard. and drop them off Not with the babysitter. <laughs> uh, if you guys want to tell the people where they can find you, um, if you want, I'm gonna go ahead and get the raid prepped up. We're gonna raid <laughs> over to Loreforge. I am Pockets Art on all the places. Um, I. It, 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 pockets was taken just about everywhere and so but uh, i only get it in video games but like all the socials and stuff it's pockets art <laughs> and zillin is zillin everywhere Z uh -oh. zillin is coming out of the shadows by the way so yeah, yeah. keep your eye out he's gonna be making the rounds here soon yeah, yeah i'm gonna be on lots of things and i got videos that i'm working on etc mm, yeah mm, mm. It's kind of like John Cena. He's coming. Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> and his name is Xylophone. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, man, that was too funny. Uh, yeah, I'm working on a on a video right now on class identity and whether right. or not there will have be class identity in Ashes of Creation. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, go find me on YouTube. It's just Zillin. And that video will be coming out in the next, uh, I would say, inside the next week. Nice. Awesome. Nice. So by the time you guys see this, it may or may not be out, but I'll have their links in the description. So go check them out. Uh, that being said, we are TGF Tavern across all of our socials. You can find us on X, Twitch, YouTube, etc. We live stream our Tavern Talks on Tuesdays, usually, and our podcast, TGF uh, Podcast, on Fridays, usually. Um, and we have updates and stuff on X and on our Discord. So... If you like this kind of stuff, please consider giving us a like, follow, subscribe to our YouTube, and uh, hit that notification bell to see when we go live again. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. It's much appreciated. We love you all. You spent your time here, and uh, you, of course, do not get refunds, so therefore it is the most 
valuable thing that you could possibly give us. Wait a minute. I'm waiting a minute. What Sorry, am I waiting a minute I, for? I was trying to raid. I don't know if the raid worked, but now it's yeah. telling me that there's an ad. Uh, I see oh. the raid. It's okay, cool. With. And ads are cool. snoozed for five minutes, it says. I pushed yeah. it. Yeah, I just pushed it out. So cool. <laughs> Ignore me. Okay. Continue we the pause raid. for no I, reason whatsoever. I just want to do this really I want to say it for okay, uh, it. AirTech. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> And everyone, you heard the band. So we see you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye. Say it again. Bye.